your band name is actually not associated with the movie the monster squad i found that very interesting uh and then you said that you that you had just recently re- found out that the unseen as a band name was actually from a movie i think their whole logo is from the movie as a matter of fact the one with the yeah. spider web the spider web is directed yeah it's taken right off What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to the Punk Rock Review Podcast. I've got a very special guest, plays drums in Monster Squad. We've got Matthew. Is it you said Cotty? That's right, Cotty. Cotty. Remembered it. Woo! My brain was like <laughs> almost got him there, bro. No worries. So, uh, yeah, dude. California '90s, early 2000s street punk man. I'm telling you, dude. I'm very excited to talk to you today. How is your afternoon going? Uh, it's been good. It's been good. Did some gardening. Did some graphic designing. And Let's go. Now I'm sitting in my practice space which is a tough shed that's what's <laughs> up dude so graphic design is that something you do for a like a regular regular job quote unquote um uh, usually part-time freelance nice. work i take it cool. take it, i can get it um we can go into more the bat maybe a little bit later if you want to but yeah always, uh, always been a hobby and sometimes uh sometimes a side job you know so yeah that's what's up mm-hmm. i do a lot of uh i don't know artwork it's mostly uh cut and paste old school style stuff that I just can't get myself to not love. So I do a lot of that screen printing things, uh, stuff like that, but, uh, heck yeah, dude. So yeah. Welcome to the punk rock review podcast, my friend. So thank you. Thanks for having me. I absolutely, absolutely. I'm very excited to talk to you actually. So we had talked a little bit before, before we got to recording this about the fact that your band name is actually not associated with the movie, the monster squad. I found that very interesting. Uh, and then you said that you that you had just recently re- found out that the unseen as a band name was actually from a movie. I think their whole logo is from the movie, as a matter of fact, the one with the yeah. spider web. The spider web is directed, yeah, it's taken right off. And That's... I didn't know that a couple of years ago, and we had gotten into them. I think when their first record had come out, maybe ninety eight, ninety nine. I forget what year, but you know, quite quite a long time ago. Yeah, but like twenty years later see a, a vhs somewhere like oh i recognize that logo oh didn't know oh is that cool. how you found out you saw you saw it somewhere and we're like I just wait a minute saw, yeah just thinking just randomly saw the uh, the cover of the movie i don't remember how but you know instantly recognized the logo because i know one of us used to have it that exact one painted on the back of our jacket so phil did our singer phil did yeah so that was kind of funny <laughs> dude that's awesome yeah i think uh a lot of folks kind of associate punk rock and horror movies because i mean look at the misfits dude that that that's exact that's from a horror movie too so yep i kind of think of it as a a uh time-honored tradition you take your stuff from horror movies if you can because it's freaking red yeah yeah so absolutely uh i think i was going to ask you earlier what kind of got you and the rest of your friends into punk rock what made y'all start a punk rock band because this is we're the same age almost exactly like within a couple of months so uh, mm-hmm. i remember the 90s very well what what guys what got you guys what was maybe your entry point did you hear some bands you really liked and you just wanted to start a band or, or were you just part of a skate scene or what uh probably all of the above i mean sure I think the guys in the I'll, I'll just say it from like the original four members of the band we were all skaters and rockers rocker kids you know um with our sonic youth and ministry and rage against the machine t-shirts Dude. stuff like that right so you just obviously use like anything you gravitate towards that person uh those people and the junior high that three of the four um first members of the band went to had an area called the gum tree which was just a redwood tree covered in gum okay. Pretty gross. <laughs> that's awesome but it's it's <laughs> It was where the rockers hung out, and it was also coincidentally right next to the art class. Okay. Um, so, which a lot of us were, you know, loving art class, and we were very blessed to have a really, really influential art teacher um, named Wendy Brasher. And this is in junior high, so seventh and eighth grade, uh, okay. 94, 95, 96, depending on, you know, I'm the youngest of the group back then. But, um, how punk happened? I don't know, honestly. I mean, I think it would have happened anyway, but the pivotal moment for me was that actual art teacher handing me her Dead Kennedys records in class. That she Whoa. had. Because, um, and I've, I've talked about this quite a bit and other things are random because I, her and I are still friends. We're still very close. Um, something I'm very fortunate for. But um, yeah, she would let everyone listen to records in class. You know, the Zeppelins and uh, Elvis Costello. Uh, and then, yeah, one day she's like, yeah, 
probably shouldn't show these to you, but I think you're going to like them. <laughs> it was Fresh Fruit, and it was another band called Pariah um, from, from Martinez from the early 80s, early mid-80s. Um, and then her her Pistols, never mind the Bullocks LP. So I guess technically that would be the moment for me specifically. Um, That's awesome. But I think all the, the, the four of us and, and our, our, our other friends surrounding us that hung out that were event, like not in the band, I guess, but a part of the group, um, I don't know. We just all kind of found it organically and just would go and look through magazines and look at that album cover and says, that looks cool. You know, we happen to identify with the, you know, kind of the belief system, the politics, um, um, the, the, the do, do it yourself mentality. And of course, um, the appearance was very fun for all of us too, you know, especially in the very beginning. I mean, like getting to like deck out your own clothes, however you wanted to, or, or painstakingly hand sew your, your pants yeah. yourself but i mean like scrap by scrap i have a pair of green plaid pants that i still have that instead of like getting a plan that you could easily probably get from a fabric store it's like i'm just gonna figure this out and lay it out right and, and you know pin it together and <laughs> duct tape it and then hand sew it and you know but it was fun it was like it was like a learning process the whole thing the whole thing has been a giant learning process and, and of like self-discovery and and trying just to remind yourself that you can do any of these things yourself, you know, but, um, not sure absolutely. I, but you know, yeah, it, it just was like a very unique moment where there was a gaggle of kids from, we'll say the two sides of town where we grew up in Vacaville, California. And we all just kind of happened to be getting into the same thing on different sides of town. And then at some point we met in the middle and became friends. And then the, the crew, the group grew, our tribe grew, if you will. Um, and then we had each other to lean on. So there was like, we kind of didn't have a choice, honestly, because it was a very small group of people that looked like us in that town. And it was definitely a point where you would still get, you know, like physically and verbally like fucked with um, by people that shouldn't fuck with you. <laughs> like, you know, right. like authority figures, uh, yep. people, tw people twice your age, you know. Yep. So, yeah, but, uh, I remember that vividly, too. 25 yeah. year olds beating the crap out of me at 13. I'm like, what did I do to you, man? They're like, yeah. stupid nerd calling me. You know, you know, homosexual yeah. slurs and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fun when you're just like trying to walk the jack in the box to get a jumbo jack and two tacos for two bucks. Bro. And Man, I, that's how I know I we're definitely truck. the same age. <laughs> yeah. And truck pulls over and calls you all sorts of things. You're like, Man, you have a beard. I barely, <laughs> I barely have pubes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but like, you know, like, <laughs> this is so but it was what it was. You know, that's awesome. I remember. So you said something that, man, we have a lot of weird, like little similarities and parallel parallels with our with our life, man. It's not quite handing me the LPs, but I have a very distinct memory of being in like 10th grade. I was probably like 16. And I remember I was the only kid that really liked what I liked. But I remember in my art class, my teacher telling me, hey, we're going to recreate a famous painting. And I remember sitting down and I had chosen Starry Night. And she said, you can only do three colors. And I said, oh, man. So I chose red, white, and blue. And I remember painting the whole thing with, like, all these weird, like, I don't know, man, anti-governmental stuff. But the, I chose red, white, and blue on purpose. But I was listening to Dead Kennedy's Bedtime for Democracy. I'm not even a huge Dead Kennedy's fan, but I was listening to that in, on a, in a discman. And mm -hmm. I was, like, painting this painting. And then she really liked mine. And she put it in the hallway, and the principal took her down. Because we're I'm from, like, Cypress, Texas, dude. A little, like, redneck, like. Yeah, it was like Northwest Houston, and uh, but Dead Kennedys was a was a early, you know, entry mm -hmm. point for me as well. I think the '90s is interesting as a whole because you mentioned you had Ministry, Rage, all this stuff on your shirts, right? I I think that that's kind of happening again now. But the only, other than that, the only time I can think of that being a thing is the '90s, where you just had the alternative crowd, and I think that Nirvana was probably to, to thank for a lot of that because they had to bridge the gap between like industrial metal uh alternative to punk and ska and all that stuff uh so i think 90s was uh we all kind of liked a little bit of everything whether they want to admit it or not uh yeah. all i ever liked was punk nah bro no, you probably like I mean, and i've told folks about this too like, especially i don't know if they're interested to hear this you know like yeah uh punk hit for me and then I, that's all i wanted to listen to and dk was and still is my number one band like nice part, it's 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 um but um you know, uh, sometime in, I'm going to guess, late eighth grade or probably ninth grade when I probably started ordering records. I don't remember, but I got rid of all that stuff. All my Nirvana CDs, all my Nine Inch Nails, 
uh, Soundgarden, a- anything that wasn't a you know loud, fast, hardcore punk rock band. But I did know, the same. Or, and then three three years later, by like eleventh grade or twelfth grade, I was rebuying all that stuff back. Oh you no! Know? I yeah. <laughs> I think it's part of it's insecurities, it's part of man. Yeah, I just think it's part of the process, and I don't think I don't think I ever felt like I truly didn't like that stuff. It's just my my brain was so I was just ready to soak up this whole new, actually old because everything I was buying right was, most of the times weren't current bands, um, and when that happens, that's a whole other conversation of like getting into current bands versus just follow, following legacy bands. Um, you know, uh, I got over that and it's like wait, I, I still like in Euro is still one of the best records of all time, and I'll fight to the death over that. You know, so started buying all that stuff back. You know, like quickly. And that's that's. I, I've got some stuff in my record collection that I I, I just kind of laugh when I look at it because I'm like, man, I remember when I used to be embarrassed by this record. Like, I <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill. Yeah, that is a really really good album. Album though, like that album yeah. is front to back really great music. And if you can listen to that, you might be able to learn something from it and write a really great punk uh, song. So yeah. like, you know, uh, oh. punk rockers are very weird people by nature i think we, we have these weird little things well, we... i think like like any subculture it can get gatekeeper e and, and yes pussy, right? i mean look at just to bring up dk like chicken shit conformist off of bedtime for democracy anarchy for sale you know those type of topics topics bringing up like how clicky it can be and again i will not say it's just the punk scene because it's absolutely not it's it's every no or, it's yeah but also, what do you expect when it's typically ran by you? <laughs> yeah, like, right, right. Like, I, I mean, I went. I, I, a lot of us probably did. Like, you go through the clicky phase. Um, maybe, maybe you contributed to it. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you had no idea you were contributing to it. Like, you're fucking eighteen. Like, right? You know? Are you that self-aware? I mean, I, I would love to say that I was, but I probably wasn't. I, I have no idea. Um, so. I just think it's part of the process, you know, and if some people get out of it around that time, some people don't, I mean, I've definitely dipped out for a while and that usually means I'm experimenting or dedicating more time and energy to some other, um, brand of right, uh, right. Other form of it, you know, instead of the super fast stuff the whole time, you know, cause yeah, you get burnt out. Like you have to try out other things, you know. So um, I agree with "burned out" is the exact words I would use because sometimes I, I now I have those like thirty records that I just nonstop always oh, go yeah. back to. But then, but I've got hundreds of albums that all kind of look, dude. I hate it when people go, "Oh, they all sound the same." Because I can listen to some bands and go, "No, that's this band. No, that's this band." It won't take me but a five second clip, and I can tell you who it is. Right. But when I listen to rap music right now. Yeah, I go. Yeah, it all sounds the same. I'm like, oh crap, I'm that guy. So yeah. I just try not to. I just try not to do that, you know. Yeah, because it's it's it's. But yeah, it's, but my point was that yeah, you, you burn burnout's real, man. Like sometimes you want to hear. Sometimes I want to hear like intricate guitar playing. Sometimes I want to hear a ballad, dude. Sometimes I want to hear. Sometimes I want to hear some hip hop. I'm from Houston, bro. We oh, have yeah. that shit slowed down down here. But I want to hear some screw. Like I'm in a mood for that, especially when I have some kind of you know medication in my system from a doctor when i got a tooth pulled i'm like oh i understand this better now yeah uh, but so, uh on on i think also there's you know there's hundreds and hundreds of bands that sound whatever pick a band right um we'll use an easy one minor threat there's so many bands that sound like minor threat so many bands that sound like misfits i will argue there's not many bands that sound like dead kennedys at all <laughs> but there's really not and there's, there's not, not. The bands like i'm not saying that but um Sometimes you're just in the mood for something that sounds like a direct, um, we'll call it tribute instead of ripoff, a, a, a nice tribute to Minor Threat, right? Um, or Blitz, for example, um, Mess, a newer band called Mess, who's like fucking sick. First heard it, I was like, this sounds like Blitz worship. And nice. I'm so stoked about that. And um, I mean, I don't I know mean, what I mean, they're going for, but like, cool sounds great like you can only reinvent uh so much and of course i longed for that band who goes like i've never heard some punk music like this i've never heard something like this before i recently found a band actually um hold on okay let me let me digress let me go backwards real quick real fast let me go backwards real fast but it's kind of related 
in the thing of like all these bands sounding similar, but they're all tight or, or, or maybe it's clear that they're just a rip off band. Who cares? Oh, I certainly don't. Yeah. So, so this is going to be a, a short, humble brag story. I was doing an art show with Ed Culver, the photographer, um, who shot almost everything from LA, <laughs> the damaged cover, uh, black flag. Dude, wow. No shit. So, so I was tasked with, picking him up from the airport in San Francisco and then the grueling task of taking him to Jello office house. Oh, I don't want to cook pillows. Of course I did. Oh, wow. So, uh, quick hangout in the house for a while, which that's a whole unique experience for me. I'm just sitting there like, this is so interesting. <laughs> and then, uh, um, on the way, and then I dropped them off somewhere else and I went about my merry way. So in the car, my little car, I put on the newest whole hog record. <laughs> In the car, just didn't tell yes. them. Like, oh shit, they don't, they don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, and it was the album Radiation Blues and a song called Suscrofa. And I put it on. We're just driving. We're just driving. And Ed, Ed Culver, photographer, is in my passenger seat, and he goes, "Hey, it's a good song. Sounds pretty good." I'm like, oh, cool, thanks. Did not want to say I'm in this band, at right? Because then it's like weird. It makes things yeah. weird. <laughs> Jello is in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, but are they doing anything new? Was <laughs> that sounds exactly like him too. <laughs> Dude, I, I took that as yeah. uh, I was like, "God damn right!" That's the best response I can get from someone who's been there since the beginning. Like, Dude. yeah, it's a song, but are you doing anything new? I mean, you know, that guy has I... high expectations for music, right? Um, yeah. And, yeah, um, it was kind of like, not. dude, chill. Like, chill, no, man. But dude, I love that response so much. But it's not, but dude. On, on the next record we put out called Dystopian Reality, uh, on the A side, the run out groove on the vinyl, I was going to not tell anybody and just do this. I was going to have it carved out like, you know, hey, I like this song, whatever. <laughs> and then <laughs> put Ed, Ed Culver's initials or E. Culver. And then on yeah. the B side, I was going to put, but are they doing anything new? JB. Dude. I didn't do it. I wish I would have, but you know. That's a really great it's, it's story. Kind of a though, deep man. Cut <laughs> that's a really yeah, great story cool. though. I love that's that is exactly what I want to hear from guests on this on this podcast is like cool stuff like that. Cause I would have never heard that if I didn't talk to you in person. Uh, yeah, Jello Boffer is an interesting character. I I haven't met him but one time and it was a long time ago and he was doing like a if I'm not mistaken, he wasn't even performing music. I think he was doing like a spoken word thing or something. Or was that Rollins? I can't remember. I think I'm pretty sure it was Jello though. I know Henry Rollins did that too, but I'm, yeah. I'm almost certain it was Jello. And he was very, uh, um, he was cool with me. He was a very interesting fellow. But yeah. uh, I can't imagine picking that dude up and driving that guy around. It's probably uh, yeah. Probably... Again, like the, the cheesy cliche thing to say is like, you know, 14 year old me who got when I got into the band would have never thought I'm a at his house, b that I'm dropping him off at his friend for dinner. <laughs> right i mean but that is you know, like this is this is one of the cool things like this is art and punk or art and music like i was there because of well i it's just through the networking of friends and growing the community and being around and you know contributing most of most importantly and then yeah it was just all right weird. so <laughs> this pales in comparison to that like this is nowhere i'm not the one up you guy i'm the one down you guy so ah. my, my my cool story is this so I had a comic book shop, uh, as I told you earlier, and uh, I had talked to Lars Fredrickson, who is my favorite band, is Rancid. And so I'm like talking to him on Instagram about buying some stuff from him, right? And it just ends up being this like long thread of back and forth. And he goes, hey, man, can I uh, can I just call you? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure. And so he, I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, yeah, sure. Here's my phone number, buddy. I go right back to work. And I'm like, da-da-da. Phone rings. I'm like, it says California. And I was like, there ain't no way this is Lars. Fun stuff comics. Hey, what's up, man? It's Lars. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, dude. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, and he's so like nice and cordial and regular. And he was talking to me about Yu-Gi-Oh cards with his kids, bro. He was such a rad dude. That's but nice. uh, and then we got to talking, and he remembered meeting me in like 2001 solely because I got this tattoo on my throat when I was 19. And he was yeah. like, Yeah, you were out of your mind. I was like, it's like I remember thinking, like, that kid's crazy. And uh, he's like, he's like, Yeah, you never got that covered up or them, nah, bro. Hell no. But uh, That's yeah. Talking to that dude was pretty cool on the phone. It was yeah. very interesting. <laughs> but uh, we we Monster Squad had played a festival that our friends from the Whiskey Rebels had organized called Death or Glory. I'm guessing it was 06 or something like that. And uh, 
he had came up. I wasn't at the merch table, but I think our guitar player was. And he 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 came up and like bought one of our CDs. Uh, nice. He bought, and and I remember our guitar player feeling feeling weird about it. Like it was it was one of those weird moments of this is tight. This is also a situation where a lot of folks would just go, "It's cool. You can just have it and give it to him for free." You know? Um, yeah. Who he is, you know, and that yeah that stuff happens, right? He's like, I don't I don't know what to do, but I sold him a CD. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> Hey, I think yeah. it's cooler that he bought it and then he wasn't like a prick about it. He was just like, all right, whatever. Yeah, I, don't I mean, that's what I came to do is buy it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I have talked to, I don't know like famous people, but I've had, I've got some people that are like in some bigger bands that I know. And they've said like, it makes them feel weird too. When they walk up to buy something and then they're just giving it, they're like, they're very yeah. appreciative, but they're like, I was trying to, yeah. Uh, okay. And then just walk away. They're like, I was trying to support, you know, cause they're yeah. like, you know, I remember when I was young and I was a kid and I wanted people to support my yeah. band and, Dude, something you said a minute ago uh, reminded me. I wanted to ask you this. So remember, before you could buy skinny jeans, like that wasn't something you mm -hmm. could purchase. Oh, yeah. how, how did how did you guys end up making your skinny jeans? Because we had a process that we did, mm -hmm. uh, flipping them inside out, safety pinning them all the way down our legs to as tight as we wanted them, take them off, cut them, and then dental floss, of course, sew them all the way down, flip them back in, put them on. Is that what y'all did? Well, it, it, it's not me first. I, we did the outside first, which was okay. the wrong way to do it. So the outside of the legs, you're supposed to do on the inside. Um, and yeah, which, yeah, we did them on yeah, the inside. Yeah, when you cut yeah. inside, it, it just, they break way easier. Um, if yeah. you start from the knee down, break is bad. But we typically always also ran zippers down the bottom. Um, oh. But also, we also, a lot of us rock, you know, the front flap and the back and the butt flap. So, like, when the yeah, crotch yeah, break, yeah. Answer just bust like well i got a front flap anyway so it's fine right we did a lot of the butt flaps because we had a lot of concrete to, to sit on and i actually learned that that was actually something useful i didn't know when i first saw it I saw it look cool my buddy's like nah bro it's to protect me from getting holes in my ass all the time i yeah. was like oh, oh son of a bitch it's a real thing i did i thought we were just trying to look awesome but uh <laughs> i still have i remember i'm looking at one of my butt flaps from high school right now it's like dude that's wall. rad I've only had a couple of them. I had, I think, three. Same. One was a Motorhead one that was given to me. And mm -hmm. then I had a Branson one that I made. And then I think I had, I think it was a Global Threat that my friend had, like, made for me. Like, we were making stuff together, and I was helping him screen print shirts. And he was like, here, I don't have no money, but you could have this. And I was like, that'll work. And, you know, yeah. back to, when you're young, man, money's yeah. not the main objective. The main objective is being awesome, having cool shit to do, and, like, <laughs> hanging out with your friends. Like, yep. I was like, money, bro, none of us have money. Dude. I'll take that flap, dude. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. I remember the first time I told somebody that wasn't a punk rocker, they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, sewing something with, with floss. And they're like, why would you use dental floss? I'm like, you ever try to break this shit? It's impossible, yeah. man. I'm like, it's so, amazing. I never you used know? dental floss because I always want a black thread. And then eventually oh. we, learned about, we learned about upholstery thread, which was made for curtains. Oh. That Dude, stuff. No, I like that. That stuff will, I mean, you could behead someone with that stuff. Um, like it's, yeah, nothing ever ripped for for us because we discovered a that's awesome thread. upholstery thread that's yep. actually good news if you're watching this man you're trying to do some yeah. some pants now you got a second yeah. option bro i yeah. like the white on yes. the black look like i'm um, like like yes, shit dude right like you know the yep. uh dude i always get compliments on my gripple patch makes me very gripple happy patch. Yep. yeah bro gripple's so good dude oh yeah yeah they're bay area east bay oh. i uh they were, I think New Mexico first, but I've never I've never traveled anywhere, man. Being from Houston, it's really weird. There's a lot of bands I don't know much about. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff I never a lot of bands I never got to see. And so, sure. like the fact that I, I I'm always very proud of the fact that very early on I was like, oh, that band's cool. What's that? And they're like Grimple, and I was like, cool name, man. Like uh, I'll take that. So I've I've been a fan of theirs for a very very long time. I really oh, yeah. enjoy their music. Uh, their vocal style was very interesting. I really like the vocals in that group. Uh, yeah. Did you, were you a fan? Do you know if you were a fan more of the Up Your Ass LP or they have a split with Logical Nonsense? I would argue they're, they're the same band, but audio wise, they're such different bands. So the Logical Nonsense. I like Nonsense, to ripple up your ass LP better, personally. Yeah, yeah that's more sing along, more catchy. Some people, yeah. I've never, never considered them this, but I talked to some folks who, who were around then and they're like, yeah, we always consider them a pop punk band. What? I never thought about that. But if you listen to the music, it's very pop sounding. It's just with those vocals on top, the streaming. Maybe that's vocals. why I liked it so much then, because I'm I'm unabashedly a fan of fucking pop punk, dude. I was gonna say earlier, 
about the bands that just repeat the thing. I'm a huge fan of like Ramon score shit. The older I get, the more I like it, man. Because I got I'm old, dude. I like sensitive ears and shit, man. I don't want to hear. I don't necessarily yeah. want to hear somebody screaming in my ear all day. But uh, yeah. I can listen to fucking Tange Ball Rocket. I wear I wear this. I have three of these fucking hats, man. It's ridiculous. Like <laughs> there's no no reason to have three of those other than you know uh, they're red. But yeah, man. What are uh, what are some of your favorite bands? What do you what do you listen to these days? Oh shit! Um, I try to stay more in tune with the newer bands. Um, uh, I actually have all these bands written out on my phone, and this is for nice. now. My phone, I can't really get to it. Um, or maybe we can. Can I? I have Let's, no idea. Okay, we're gonna do a. We might have to cut this, but I don't know. Okay, <laughs> we'll see. Um, notes. Yeah, camera went away, but I can still hear you, so we're fine. Ah, okay, okay. Um, oh, you can't see me at all? No, but I can hear you fine, so we're good. If you need to read, a, read off a note, you're good, bro. No worries. Damn, I was hoping I could see him in the camera. Oh, you now me? you're back on camera. Um, let's see. Uh, damn, bands to listen to. This is this gets tough because I always forget. Feel like I'm gonna forget somebody. Um, I always forget bands. <laughs> I try not yeah. to. But I... I mean, newer bands. I don't know. Um, there's a band called Zui X X U I from the Bay Area. Might have butchered it, how to say it, um, that I like a lot. Um, Quaaludes from San Francisco. Um, Great name. Sacramento, yeah, Sacramento's got Bury the Body, Bag the Head. Uh, Jesus, this is what's going to get me in trouble. I'm oh, no, I'm gonna send you, I'm going to send you a text later and go, hey, copy and paste a bunch of those bands for me because I there's a, there's good, there's bound. I think the XUI, I think I've actually heard them before because I don't know how to pronounce that either. Um, that's a very distinct band name. Bury the yeah. Body, Bag the Head's an awesome name too. Yeah, uh, that's was, a... uh, Dark Thoughts from Philly. Um, I don't know you, them oh, yet. Okay, if you like, I don't consider them Ramon, Ramon worship, but uh, you, you you probably disagree. Yeah, look up oh, Dark, nice. Thoughts. Dark Thoughts. Yeah. Have you <laughs> heard of uh, Mean Jeans? Uh huh. Yep. Dude, yep. they just put out a new album that's fantastic, bro. I couldn't believe how good it was. I was honestly kind of surprised. That's cool. ridiculously good. Have you heard of? Uh, I've been listening to the Chisel a lot. You ever heard of those guys? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, dude. Their new album is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Pure Noise put it out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's right here. That's how much I listen to it. It's sitting right next <laughs> to me. Let's do it. So good, dude. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, very. When I first heard them, I was like, I like Cockney Rejects too. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, not meant know. as a diss. Not meant I mean, as a diss. No, um, but you're not wrong, dude. Really you're fun. not wrong. They like, do it really well. They no, do it really, really well. I, I the reason I let. <laughs> No, they, they, they played at a small bar in San Francisco, and I just didn't go. Um, yeah, I mean, I live, I live, it, it would have been a couple-hour drive each way, and I was like, yeah, I'm not up for the drive, so I didn't go. And I'm amazed at how big they've gotten. Like, No, they've gotten huge, dude. Um, like, yeah. the reason I was laughing so hard is because when I – I do a lot of record reviews on this channel, man, and I and I was like I – didn't, I didn't say the Cottony Rejects, but I definitely thought of that band. But I was like, man, it sounds like – Dropkick Murphys and Blood for Blood, like kind of mixed together, like early old Dropkick, like UK eighty two stuff. Whatever, we'll just go that direction. We'll put, you know, uh, you know, uh, fuck it, uh, Cox Bar and meets Blood for Blood. And sure. I really, really, I really enjoy their new record a lot, though. But that was funny because I, I do that a lot where I'll hear a new band and go, yeah, I like so and so too. Like that's exactly how I react to bands because I'm a, a jaded old forty two year old shit, that's and, right. and I, I love it. No, I just it made me chuckle, man. It was really, really funny. I like that. Uh, oh. No, dude. People in bands don't take that shit to, as a as a disrespect. They're like, hell yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Rejects, fuck yeah. yeah sure. uh, but uh, oh, oh, other bands. Oh, real quick. Um, I have to do, plug for other bands. Um, Love, L U V. That is okay. um, Phil, our singer from Monster Squad. His his other band. Um, oh, nice. It's definitely like on the heavier, heavier, heavier side. Um, kind of mathy. A lot of like. Oh, okay. Funky, funky chords. Yeah, and um. And the bass player Dorsey, he and I have been in a, um, a couple bands together too. Build us airplanes, not like heavy punk stuff. More on the, I guess, Dinosaur Junior. Built to Spill world. Oh, oh shit! Okay, that is different. Yeah, yeah. From like stuff. you know, from traditional street punk sounds is my point. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, again, it's like you just I don't know. You like different styles of music, and I don't want to play in just punk bands. So right, you know, I find that. Bizarre. Well, that happens more as we get older, I think. When we're younger, man, we're we're kind of like, eh, I got my lane, I'm gonna stick to it, man. But as you get older, you're like, I just want to kind of, like, I have friends that are in bands that when I, I have, okay, my old guitar player Halston, he's in another band that 
I'm still friends with all the guys in the band. And but so I follow him on social media, and one day it pops up like a like a notification, and it's like Halston Lugo's playing live, and I was like, oh shit, what's he playing right now? And I and I I just really love his guitar playing, so I click on it, and he's playing like this. I don't know what to call it, dude. Like like traditional Mexican music, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was like so shocked because I had never heard him play anything but punk. But I know he's a great guitar player, so I wasn't shocked to that degree. But I was just like, oh damn, I never thought I'd see him in like a like a nice button down shirt playing this place that was not where we usually hang out. It was it was pretty cool, man. I I yeah. like to see people spread their wings a little bit and and play dude. interesting new different things. Yeah, I mean to that degree. Um, God, uh, what's his name? Kelly, the bass player from like Resist. Early Defiance, Detestation. He's been in a country band, I think, with his partner, or maybe it's his wife, for a long time. Yeah, Jenny. Dude, Dunn. that's awesome. Jenny Don't and the Spurs, I think it's what they're called. But that's a great know, name too. Yeah, this is a dude. I'm like, holy. I mean, he's a ripper on the bass, especially for punk. Um, yeah, he's up there playing country. And even Justin, uh, our bass player from Monster Squad, um, he's plays with he plays with Chuck Reagan. Oh also. shit. Um, Oh yeah, man! Just I, I miss just from proximity. They live in the you know they live in the same small town, and one day Justin's like, "Oh, um, meeting up with Chuck this week to play." I was like, "Oh, that's fucking cool, man!" So, dude, not, you know, I like love Chuck hot Reagan water music, solo stuff or whatever it's called. It's like Chuck Reagan and the Camaraderie, I think is what it's called. But yeah, I so think guy, so. Yeah, dude, yep. that's our bass player. That guy's vocals are powerful, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got some chords, dude. He's, he's yeah, that guy could sing his ass off, dude. I love Hot Water Music. That's a band I didn't get into until I was a little older, though. Like back when I when they first started coming out, I was like, eh, too, yeah. eh, not 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 angry enough for me. But then as I listened to the lyrics, I'm like, oh, dude, this guy really is just like us. He's just singing it a little different. Like it's he's so good. Yep, yep, yep. So what uh what brought on the repress of the Monster Squad albums, man? That's <laughs> rad. I'm yeah. very excited. I ordered all of them. Oh, sure. thanks, man. Appreciate that. No, dude, I, I really uh, wanted to have those, so I'm very excited. Well, um, okay, so 2024 is the 20 year anniversary of our first full length record, which is called Strength Through Pain, um, that we toured on quite a bit in 2004. Nice. We were touring a lot leading up to that as well. Well, we started we started touring in July of 03, but between those that year and a half, two years, we did a lot. Um and like, I don't know if that became our our well-known record, I guess, for our level of, of a band. Definitely a record I'm very proud of. Um, that would have changed a few things on it. Like, probably would have slowed it down a couple songs. But I was so excited to be in a really good, a really nice recording studio that some of the songs are just, they're so fast. Like, we've never played, confidently two songs in that record. We've never played them that fast ever since. It oh, really? I mean, I'm talking, you know, most people probably wouldn't notice, but like, you know, I really got to make sure my cardio is up if I'm trying to play along the record on like one or two of the songs in the studio, uh, along with the record. Sorry. But um, sure. So I wanted to do a thing for that. And I was originally going to see maybe we'll release it ourselves, you know, um, I don't know. And I keep, I've, I've kept everything over the years. Like every picture we have in tour that I came home with was with the camera I bought or brought on tour. Every video is with, I brought all that stuff to document as best I could. Um, and I kept all the flyers. I have all the books, all the handwritten lyric sheets, Phil's lyric books going back to 98, maybe lyric sheets back to 97. Wow. So I wanted to have a thing, just kind of spruce it up a bit. Um, I knew it might get expensive doing it the way I kind of envisioned doing it. So I had a bright idea. I decided to email, you know, email the folks at Pirates Press since they had already, they had released our 2018 record called depression i said hey this is my idea i would love to do a 20 year anniversary of this record um and they were like yeah sounds great <laughs> oh well, that was easy um but we had you know we'd worked with each other before this yeah this rapport established we're friends but then i decided to say would you be interested in reissuing our entire almost our entire back catalog as well uh there's a couple things that have never been reissued on vinyl there's one that has never been released on vinyl and i i will handle all the layouts all the promotional material you'll need for online advertisements things like that so really you just need to put it out and handle selling them basically um and they were totally down so which 
then put me to work quite heavily, um, namely with Strength Through Pain, because I got convinced to do a 12 page booklet with that record. Wow. Which I have a gentleman named Gowdy to blame who works at Pirates Press. He's like, why don't you just do a booklet? I'm like, oh man. Oh, Jesus, that's just so much fucking work. Because originally I was going to do like a trifold 12 by 12. Like, sure. Boom, boom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But then I got those. So each each fold is like a panel, right? So each yeah. page is yeah. panel. So it'll be a six panel thing. And I yeah. was like, man, it's just not enough. I need like eight to 10 and I'm already at 10. Well, shit, I guess I'm getting a 12, doing a 12 page booklet. Um, Dude, I can't so, wait to have this. <laughs> oh, so, man. Then, honestly, I probably put a good like, easily i'm gonna guess 40 to 60 hours into just the booklet because wow. i would go boom and grab prints four by six prints negatives flyers notes scan edit drop them in layout cool nah not really feeling that or i would get so sold on the fact that i was done like this design work is done send it to a couple trusted people who i know share a similar design eye and will tell me straight up they're like uh, yeah, three of these pages are just not very good. This last one is very blah. I was like, cool, <laughs> shit, but also shit. Now I have to go back to the drawing board. But um, dude, you got to have those people in your corner, though, man. You yeah, got to have people that are willing to tell you yeah. when you need to fix something. So that's Absolutely. good. I'm glad you put your you know best foot forward and not yeah. you know half ass yeah. it. So it was just cool, man. Like I mean, and having pirates do it you know they want their whole they want to make things just really really cool as best as you can as best you can and it was kind of a like it it was kind it was kind of a do whatever you want like meaning include whatever you want with this release you know like which is a freedom i it is great to have that freedom but also it made me go oh i can do whatever i want which made me think too much a little bit and right you know, I, I had to reel myself in you know, to be like, okay, uh, I'm not going to change the artwork on Strength of Pain. I did put a different band photo on the back, fix some grammar errors. Again, it's like every pressing guy, right? <laughs> there's new grammar errors. Or I decide I want to finally capitalize at the beginning of each lyric where I didn't in the past. And little things, little things. Oof. And then, Yeah, that's a lot of work, though. Yeah, and then I we added a flexi, a two-song flexi, which has the song Strength of Pain was written by the first four members of the band, Primarily, well, by our first guitar player, Dave, um, who at some point had left the band. And then we kind of like stopped playing that version for whatever reason. And eventually we just like, oh, let's, we had, we had what is now the song Strength Through Pain, but no lyrics. And I think Phil just pulled out the lyric sheet for the old Strength Through Pain and just changed the words around a little bit. And so there's two complete versions, two different versions of that song. Um, Hell yeah. And sadly, I don't have a good recording of the first four members playing that. Um, I have a live recording, but it's not like it's, it was recorded at the college station, UC Davis, um, KDVS radio station. But I do have a version of the song recorded at the local co community college with the second lineup, which is when that member Dave had left the band. And that recording sounds cool in the it's really shitty sounding. So it sounds kind of cool way. <laughs> that yeah. makes any sense, hey, right? That's, so that's, that's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that so that flexi disc. You know, I included a song that's on a compilation only uh, called Won't Conform, um, which was definitely our first track with a holy shit, this guy can play bass, bass line. Like, it's, it's, it's Matt Freeman vibes all over it, 100%. Yo! And, and this is our... Man, that guy's... Uh, yeah, and uh, um, our bass part at that time, his name is Richie. He, oh, he sings in that band, Build Us Airplanes, the ones that the, okay. the inner style band that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. So he... He played bass in Monster Squad, and he was like our third bass player, uh, maybe only for about a year or two. Um, but he played bass on that song, Won't Conform. Um, and it's I think I have it on I have it on our Bandcamp page. It's not on Spotify or any other streaming platform. But that song is such a fucking ripper. But we could just never pull it off live that well. Mm. Uh, some songs don't translate live as well, and that was that's one we always felt didn't translate live that well. Um, Dude, but that's whole, interesting. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I mean, that that's really kind of it. So, the, oh, yeah, that's what I was just buttoning this up real quick. Uh, that Flexi, yeah, has that song, Won't Conform, has an original version of Strength of Pain, the first version of it, has a giant 18 by 24 poster, plus Ooh. the 12 booklet. Um, I have it right here, you know, uh, but yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, cover. No, that's cover. A, that's a, that's amazing, bro. Like you should absolutely be stoked about that. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I mean, this well, is something to be proud of. Wow, and, that's you know, incredible. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Tribute to our our late great friend Bobby, who we lost last year. Um, oh damn! I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I was just so excited to see. A lot, a lot of folks don't know about Pirates Press is that they actually manufacture the records. So them telling you that, they, hey, do whatever you want, even makes more sense because they have the ability to be able to just produce it at a much lower cost than, say, I could do. So, right. I mean, that's if I was going to call anybody, if I had a band, I was going to try to get somebody to help me out, it would be them. I would be like, hey, you know a bunch of my friends. Any chance you could help me with this? Like, I've bought, I've done a lot of work with those guys, and I'm trying to do an LP right now, and I'm going through them to make it. So, uh, yeah, yeah um, very nervous about that. So, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 it, it's a it can be a very painful process to be honest. Like, well, it's as, it's just so as a customer or even as like a band, it's like you know, it's just it's a lot of work just to get it going. It's a it's so. expensive, but it's like. It's kind of one of those things I tell people with tattoos, man. I'm like, look, dude, I've been getting tattooed for 20, 23 years, 24 years almost. You get what you pay for and you pay for what you get. It's the same across every single industry. If you want good shit, you have to pay for it. And yep. I would prefer to just have my stuff look good. If I get stuck with a higher price tag at the end of the day, at least I know when people buy my things. They're like, yeah, this is really nice. Like, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, this is, I really like this. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. I'm happy. So, yeah. Um, I'm yeah, very excited. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, so we're doing uh, five 12 inch records with them this year. So um, there's an there's an EP that we released on CD, burnt CDs only, in the year 2000, which was the year I'm assuming you as well graduated high school. Uh, well, was supposed to, uh, but no, it did not. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was. I was. A bad, I was a shithead. <laughs> I was a, <laughs> no I was one of the, I was no. a hooligan, bro. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, but yeah, I was definitely so yeah, supposed six, to. Yeah, <laughs> there's a six song we had done back then called Not For Them, which was like with the second lineup of the band, which basically means like, you know, our first trumpet player, Dave Left and Jay, um, who we've had ever since, uh, joined the band. And, you know, we, it was all burnt CDs and Kinko's photocopied uh, covers. Um, and that like EP, I didn't really realize it until I was redoing that layout for the current vinyl version. That like that EP really like kind of set the tone for the topics we would discuss as a band, mm. which which basically just translated to, uh, you know, feelings of de anxiety, depression, things like that, um, and of course like overcoming things, um, knowing that you have the ability and power to overcome, you know, whatever challenges you're, you're faced with in life. Um, yeah, you know, and, and I, I don't think we really realized it back then, but like, yeah, was, there was a song, it's called Pressure, and it's on Strength of Pain also, but that was the first time we wrote a song where it's like you de dealing with the pressures of everyday life. And it's a topic that many bands sing about, but I think it took many, many releases to realize like, oh, we have, um, <laughs> we have a seven inch called Anxiety, an album called Strength, Strength Through Pain, which is definitely a, an overcoming all those things, slash a kind of a breakup record, to be honest. Um, and then a record called Depression. <laughs> it's like, so we're, we're, mean, trying to, we're trying to talk about these things, man, you know? But uh, Well, so. I mean, you, you probably remember this as well as I do, man. In the 90s, that stuff was still looked at as like weaknesses. Like you'd oh, go yeah. and talk to your folks and be like, man, I'm having this problem at school. Like, like okay. If yeah. my mom had known when I was in high school what I was dealing with, and it wasn't for her, it wasn't a lack of her trying to figure it out. She was stuck in a no dad around situation. She had to work a bunch. Of, but if she had, if I had been able to articulate my thoughts and my school had taken it seriously, who knows, man? Maybe I would have graduated. Like, who knows, dude? Like, I was, I'm bright, man. I'm smart, but I don't learn the same way as other kids do. I can't read a book and. Bro, I got memory issues. I'm not going to get into that, but I got memory issues, bro. And, like, I, I I can't read a book and learn anything. I have to learn shit by doing it with my hands and, like, repeating the process a bunch. Uh, I'm When I first started working for Alamo Draft House, I was 41 years old. 40, maybe 40. I've been there a while. Grown-ass man. And I had to take in 
uh, when they put me in the front bar, I had to learn all the concierge duties, like to do ticket sales and stuff, just in case we were slow. They're like, we'll cut them. You get a higher dollar an hour rate plus your tip pay. Uh, it'll work out in your benefit. I was like, oh, cool. I'll learn that then. No problem. I forgot how hard it was to learn new shit because I've been working for myself for like years. I was doing this as like just part-time supplemental stuff. And dude, I was almost embarrassed. I had to bring like a photocopied, laminated step-by-step -step process to do refunds, ticket exchange, like ticket, like seat changes. And uh, one other thing, mm -hmm. I don't remember the two major ones were refunds. And then the seat changes though, because my wife had to help me because I couldn't do it for the life of me. I couldn't, and I would get like overwhelmed at work. And as a grown ass man, I'd be like, man, I'm about to quit this job. I don't need this shit anyways, dude. Like I can't right. deal with this. It's freaking me out. Like, uh, right. so I, you know, back, back when we were kids, man, that stuff was like, Oh, stop. And I, and I, you know, I got an autistic child, dude. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's tough for me to like not re repeat the things that I was told when I was a kid. Like, you know, right. it's not an excuse. Well, it's not, it's not an excuse, but it's also no. a, a real thing. We have to deal with it. Like, yeah. And the, um, we, we don't have any kids, but we have plenty of nieces and nephews in our world, you know, um, ranging from, uh, Jesus, uh, three to 14, uh, many okay. of them with in, in immediately in the family, you know, my siblings, um, my partner's siblings or, or even sibling, uh, and within the band, there are, oh Jesus, four, eight children. Okay. Kids. Um, in the, yeah. So you're not unfamiliar with that at all. <laughs> no, from, yeah. And they, they range from, I think three or four to 14 now, which is insane. Um, right. I think 14, maybe 13, but yeah, it's super empowering to see like how our friends and family members talk to their kids um, versus how, you know, kind of it was. And, and I know it's not like a blanket statement. It wasn't like that for everybody. But like, yeah, my parents were kids when I was born and they were doing the best they could. And they weren't equipped with, with certain tools to, you know, to to guide along a child's emotional outbursts, you know. Right. But, you know, and I was very fortunate in how, you know, yeah, sometimes it, can get, it got kind of rough for sure. You know, but, you know, I look back on it and I go, okay, I have to remind myself, like, my folks are doing the best they could, you know, with the tools they had. And I know it could have been a lot worse. That's for sure. You know, Bro, I never got beat up by my, my parents, never beat me. They never, like, I, I, I very yeah. rarely missed a meal of any kind. Like, yeah. uh, you know, what breaks my heart is whenever I'm talking to my mom and she's like, let's see, I guess she's 73 now. Right. And, uh, she'll be talking to me and she's like, cause I've got older brothers too. I'm, I'm, I'm. Mm -hmm. yeah my, my mom's a little older than i think she was i guess 30 when she had me i guess i was 30 when i had my first kid too 31 so um he's my oldest is 10 but anyways it, it I'll, I'll be talking to my mom and she'll tell me like because I, I have these like great memories like she was strict and all right like there was plenty of things that drove me nuts right but i have all these great memories dude and i have a work ethic that was given to me by my mom like i wouldn't have the drive to do the things i do without her showing me how to be that way and she's like, man, I, I'm so sorry. I tried so hard. I'm so sorry. I'm like, man, sorry for what, man? You remember Darren? And she's like, yeah, my like, his dad beat him all the time. You remember Jeremy? His dad beat him all the time. I'm like, bro, we're sorry for what, man? You tried. Like, it's yep. better to try than you didn't. You yeah. know? Yep. Yeah. It kills me when folks talk to me like that. Yeah. No, I get it. And like, it's cool that you guys can talk about that kind of stuff too, even like now, honestly, instead of. Well, she, she clearly felt the need to talk about it, right? You know? Well, and, it took. It took a long time because I was a drug addict for a long time and we didn't talk like right. about anything because I didn't want to hear it, man. She'd be like, Hey, are you doing okay? I'm like, man, just stop man. I got, I'll be out there. Like literally I would tell my mom, I got to go hit a lick. Who talks to their mom like that? Like yeah. I would be like out of my mind. I remember one time right. we were driving through my neighborhood back before I could get, a, I couldn't afford a car because I was a, you know, junkie, yeah. bro. So we're, I, I used to sell particular things to people and, Sure. We're driving through this neighborhood, and and I said, "Oh, mom, stop the car! That I need to talk to that guy." And I'm, dude, we're talking about a legitimate crackhead, right? Yeah. And my mom is not from that world, and she's like, "What do you need to talk to him for?" I'm like, "He owes me some money. I'll be right back." In front of my mom, I beat the shit out of this guy, Damn. and like took his shoes, took his money, put it in my pocket, threw his shoes on top of a building where he couldn't get them back, and told him if I ever saw him again, I'll kill him in front of my mom. Yeah, like, bro, not proud of that. Like. Sure. That's right. So, you know, for a long time, I wouldn't even talk to her about anything, bro. I just, I would, and I got back in the car. I remember very clearly, I got back in the car and she was just like driving like this. And I was just looking out the window. Like I wouldn't even look at her. I, was, I think I was ashamed of myself probably. Uh, right. But like, 
you know, I didn't know any other way to do things. And then when I finally decided, I met my wife, dude, my wife's amazing. Right. So I meet her and then that's when everything kind of got fixed. I'm not going to go into this long story, but like, yeah, it really helped my mom and I become closer. Help, you know, I got, I got kids that helped me out, help me out. My wife gives, she has faith in me that nobody has. I wouldn't have this channel without her, dude. She's the only reason I'm allowed to do this shit. I she could easily be like, nah, I need you to have a regular ass job because we need regular ass money. <laughs> yeah. But she, she believes in this shit like well, I do. So, I mean, congratulations on turning the corner, you know? Bro, oh, yeah. No, thank you, man. It did. <laughs> you it, know, I, dude. I always wanted to. I just didn't think I could do it, man. I didn't have the courage to do it without anybody. I didn't, ha I didn't have like a, I don't think I cared about me. I was like, you know, when it was just me, I was like, man, whatever. If I OD and die, I don't, whatever, who, you know. But now the first day that's, I was holding my kid, it was, that was it, bro. That's the game changer. That's the, that's the hard realization, too, is when you realize, and I've been very lucky. I've, I've always, I've never had, I've been very lucky with my relationship with, with any kind of substance, you know. Yeah. Um, so, I can't. I can't even remotely identify with the stuff you went through. Now I can identify with it in that, unfortunately, you know, much like yourself, probably we have a lot of friends that have gone through it, are going through it still, relapse. Things like Lost that. a lot of friends, man. Work, dude, man. I couldn't even count them, dude. Yeah. Tons of them. But uh, you but know, I, like I, I mm -hmm. it's it's weird, man. I tell people all the time, like I, I'm not ashamed of nothing, bro. I don't live and learn, man. Like, yes. here, like here you are. There you are. Yeah, right, right. Well, it also helps these young people that watch the channel. Like maybe some kid might be struggling, dude. My email and my Instagram is in the description. They all know that. You can hit me up anytime. I'll never not talk to somebody because, cool. you know, it would you be know. pretty shitty for me to be like, no, I'm not talking to you for five minutes. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, dude. And like, not to make this section of the conversation be about the band, but like, um, our last record, uh, <laughs> Like it's called depression and like, yeah, our singer was going through a lot of that shit. And, you know, there's an insert that comes with that record where he discusses how he OD'd on Oxycontin mm. after drinking mm. in San Francisco. I think he said on his 21st birthday, I should know. That. Wasn't there for this, but, um, you know, one of our other best friends, Marty, um, fucking saved him. He just feel he was passed out foaming blue at the mouth. Damn. You know, and this was, so this was, uh, it definitely was almost 20 years ago, right? So that stuff was, like, I think, just coming around. Yeah, uh, Oxycontin 20 years ago was like, people didn't realize how dangerous that shit was. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, that last record, Depression, he just, like, let loose the honesty bomb about that story, which was pretty intense. And, like, um, for him to be so open about something like that, but then also to talk more about it lyrically, like, like directly. Like, there's, there was no fucking dancing around the fact that this is what I'm, and what I, when I say I, I mean him. Yeah. What he was going through. And he's always been a super honest dude, lyrically, but like this, that record, I was like, dude, I guess, what have I said before? I said, like, I've known the guy since seventh or eighth grade, but I learned more about him from that record than I, I have in the past 20 years. Dude, about that's what, powerful. What he's truly going through, you know, and I had no fucking idea. No idea. And like, the, the positive outcome of him being so upfront and honest about what he was going through is we don't play shows very often and uh, it's just difficult. People live in yeah. different these days. And, um, you know, fortunately, like this is a group of friends first and uh, like the goal is that it should always remain that way. You know, um, I mean, there's people in our group thread and our band group thread that aren't technically, they're not in the band. <laughs> But they're in the Monster Squad group thread because, like, it's family. It's a fucking yep. family yep. you know? and group of friends. And, you know, it's it, maybe it's also it's an element of tribalism. Like, you know, people love to, to belong somewhere. And, like, though fo folks may not hang out all the time like they used to because we're all grown-ass folks with, with kids and jobs, things like that. Something as small as just, like, I know I'm in this thing. You know, I know that I'm in Monster Squad even though I'm not in the band. Like that's how we treat this thing, right? It's the family. It's the Monster Squad family of friends, is what we what we kind of call this. Um, what was the thing I was trying to get to about? about oh, so uh, a a result of that record, and it, and it, and it, it was happening before that depression record came out. Is when we play now, and since we don't play very often, almost every show uh, there's a few kids who walk up and say, "X, you know, X Y Z song of yours literally saved my life." You know, I was going to commit suicide or I was having these thoughts or I'm going through drug problems and like 
it's just fucking it's 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 a lot to hear that and i i, I don't write the words so i tell him like hey man i didn't i appreciate you sharing that with me and let me let me try and find phil our singer who wrote that you know that's um, amazing and like yeah there was one show where like in the middle of the show you know big old show in la i'm like hugging and I, like randomly this dude just rolls up tells me the story tears are mm. <laughs> tears are happening so i'm just like hugging this guy in the middle of the crowd for being so open with me about sharing you know their story and how they're overcoming or they're still working through it and how like a song uh, off, off whatever record doesn't matter what record it's on like help them get through that stuff and it's just crazy to hear that man it's such an honor and now it's like become a duty <laughs> like, you know like you right know, it's so yeah it feels good well feels like good. To, when you're dealing with that stuff it's it's almost like a um you feel so lonely you know what I'm saying? So like, you you don't want to go tell people because you're afraid of of them like laughing at you. When in reality, we're all dealing with a bunch of stuff. Communication is so important. It it's not something that I I would say anybody's uh, uh perfect with. I think that would be an impossibility to be a perfect communicator. Right. But it's yeah. so important to be able to 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 talk even when you're mad, dude. Like being mad at somebody, let them know, man. Like. You don't have to be a dick about it, but you can like, hey man, I'm really disappointed with this, but I wish you would have done that, man. Like, they might be like, shit, I had no idea. Like, who? Right. There's no telling what the response could be, or or if you love somebody and miss them or need them around more, tell them. They might not have any idea. Maybe they just need a reason to take a day off work, and then you telling them that they're like, damn, dude. All right, tomorrow I'm calling in, bro. I need I need a day off anyways, man. We're gonna go hang out. We're gonna go record store shopping. We're gonna go chill out, right. get some hot dogs or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, thing, the thing for me is is definitely telling folks when i'm angry T telling them when i'm angry about something i definitely stew on it and mm. um about six months ago i saw i started started to see a therapist just to talk to these things you know yeah Try to be a communicator fucking hey man it's it's, it's so hard because so much stuff is like rooted in childhood trauma um and i would say more so not just not learning the tools of how to properly communicate like how you feel um and then one thing one of my biggest takeaways from it is like what is it, what's, what's it called? I think it's, um, um, what's the term of, oh, conflict. <laughs> Big word here, conflict. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the term is called conflict avoidance. Like okay. I'm not someone who typically does well with conflict. I'm like, you know, I'm always the park at the end of the parking lot so we can get the fuck out. Like I know where the exits are, la 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 la. Efficiency, I guess is how I try to mask that. But no, a lot of it's like, honestly, conflict avoidance. Like. I don't want to get into some shit with people, you know, even if it's family, friends, partner, you know, and uh, the, 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 the humongous downside to that, there's many, but it's like when a person tries to avoid conflict because they don't want to get into it, they don't want to deal with it, they don't feel prepared, they don't have the tools for it, but then what happens? That conflict avoidance is now bubbling and simmering inside of yep. that person, and then one day, it's gonna snap right the person you're they're gonna be like what are you talking about i had no idea you felt this way so i am creating my own suffering by not telling somebody how i am bothered by something that i wholeheartedly agree with that and that sucks it's not fair to anybody especially oneself like you know right 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 especially not fair to you like <laughs> yeah and it's like i'll see you know it's just funny how like I, man i consider myself quite an open book about like stuff i've gone through in life but man it's still so hard for me to tell anybody like i didn't like how you did xyz and made me feel like shit or you whatever it might be like it's so hard for me to do it it really is but then when you do it you realize oh cool yeah like you said that person maybe had no idea zero that what they had done bothered you i so. used to be a people pleaser type so i never wanted to tell people because i was trying to like I was never popular. I was never like the cool kid. Even when I got into the punk rock scene, I still wasn't the cool guy. Like I was just like another punk rock kid. So I've always been like trying to make sure that like, I don't want to ruffle feathers, man. I don't need to be getting kicked out of my own group of people. And so it took a long time. I was probably, I was probably a father by the time I realized, oh, that's not how you should be operating, man. You need to be able to stand up for yourself. A, but B, just dude, like talk to folks, man. It's, it's, it's a, uh, yeah, I'm married to an introvert, so it's 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 interesting. I am not that way. I am very talkative. So yeah, uh, you know, our communication is 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 
borderline hilarious to be honest, but it's <laughs> it's it's a it's a thing sometimes, man. So yeah. you said you guys don't get to play a lot of live shows because you're not in the same area all the time. What are the plans in the near future? Do you or do you have any plans because you have these re-releases coming out? Um, right. Is there any is there any plans for a tour of any kind or, or anything like that? Or are you trying to maybe hit a couple of festivals? Yeah, I mean, the goal for this year was definitely to do, well, the goals were hopefully like some kind of, maybe go back in, down to Southern California. Uh, it would be great to go back to Europe. Um, Man. We, we could have made it happen last year. We were going to go to, we're going to go to Argentina? I forget. Uh, Colombia. We got like a cool offer in Colombia, but we just couldn't make it happen. Damn. Um, I mean, I'm so grateful that someone would even think to fly us out to some other country. But right. the only, yeah, the only thing that's on the books right now is on April 20th, um, we're playing at Gilman in Berkeley, which is which, let's go. Yeah, which was our, uh, our our home venue for a long time, and you know we have a, a good, very grateful history of, of doing really well there. Um, we'll see how it goes now. I mean, that was you know when we were. When we were filling that room on a regular basis, you know, that was like 04 to like 2009, 2010 or so. Um, but the coolest thing about this, so the goal was to set up our own show later this year. That was always on the books. Like, okay, we this record's being, Strength of Pain's coming out. Well, five records are coming out again. We should do a big Gilman show. But then our friend um, at Destroy Art said, hey, The Pist is coming out from the East Coast. Um, and the Pist is a band we all got into in the '90s that we still love, and hugely influential band for us. You wouldn't really tell by the way we sound and they sound, but um, um, the Pist. So that's it. That enough said. The Pist ideas are bulletproof. Yeah, dude, they're very good. Yeah, like, the new record they have is called "The Pist Is Risen," and you would have thought it came out like two years after their last record, which was in like '95. So that's ridiculous. That being said, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that being said. I was like, shit, man, like, hey, guys, uh, you know, I know we're going to do a Gilman show later on this year, but like the Pist are playing on the night on the 20th at Gilman. Do we want to do it? And it was like, yeah, we should do that. Um, so we kind of expedited the process, if you will. So we're doing one show April 20th at Gilman. That will be the record re-release uh, for uh, the Not For Them 12-inch EP, Strength Through Pain. Hell yeah. And then the new, a newer pressing of Depression, the last record, will be available okay. And that, we got that slightly remastered and slightly, oh, nice. slightly different nerdy artwork changes that almost no one's going to know. <laughs> Dude, um, I love it. So, and then, but right now the plans are to, um, we just nailed this down. And by nail it down, I really mean we finally all agreed on a weekend. Um, <laughs> right. Hey, that's, that's the hard part. To, yeah. To hopefully do free shows in the East Coast uh, this summer. Um, Hell yeah. Friday through Sunday kind of thing. Um, yep. That's the good shit. None of that's been booked or obviously not announced because it's not booked yet. So Right, right. But yeah, in a perfect world, you know, it'd be great to play more often. But like, yeah, it's just, you know, people got adult lives, busy. Phil's playing in two of the right. bands, playing yeah. in two of the bands and families. And it's like, you know, we playing live, I mean, I would say for myself and I would say confidently for the rest of the guys too, is like the best part of being in this band. It's so much fucking fun. Um and it became, I think, I think, I think we're definitely a live band. I don't know if what fans would say, but um, it's definitely home. But it's just, it's so much work to make it happen, right? It's like, right. so it'd really be worth it. And I don't mean like worth it financially. Like that's not definitely not the the world we live in for this band. Um, it's just like, is 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 this show we're really gonna be worth like the emotional effort and time to yeah. you know, like plane tickets and then realistically have one band practice, you know, hopefully two with not even the full band before we go play in front of a thousand people. Yeah. You know, dude, like, hey, when you're, when you're living in different cities, man, practices can get very complicated. Yeah. Well now we have, you know, so we're very spread out now. I mean, like two of us are in Sacramento, one's in Grass Valley, one's in Vacaville. And then we have one in Philadelphia now. Damn. And our other guitar, our other, other guitar player, both of our other other guitar players, if you will, are in New York. Jeez. So, and that's what I said like when I said that is... friends, right? Yeah. So and basically four of the five core are in the same area, Vacaville, Sacramento, 
And then one of those now lives in Philadelphia. And then two other friends who are from this area now live in New York. So it's kind of become a, you know, who show offer, who can play this, you know, right. so -and -so play it is so-and-so okay with other person playing it. Cause we want to make sure everyone's cool and happy and down. Right. Um, right. And then is, is it, is it worth yeah, like the effort, you know? Um, and I don't, I feel weird saying that, but, but you know, it's, well, it's no, a but that's a, time. that's an important metric, dude. That's yeah. a very important metric because a at 42, we're not right. 22. So we have a lot less of our life left anyway. So like, yeah. why am I wanting to go do things that aren't smart? I guess is the right word I would say. Like, like, uh, yeah, I don't know the right word, no, but I saying, like, I, I, I had to have this conversation. We had gotten some kind of offer for a show and I don't remember what state, but I didn't go. Hmm, that sounds exciting. So I wanted to talk with a friend, um, and uh, he said, "Look, think about it this way: Are all of you going to be really excited to hang out in this state or this city for two or three days?" I was like, "You know, not really." He's like, "Then don't, then don't play the show. That's it. Then that's that's your answer." You know, I was like, "Great call. It's very simple. You know, don't you have to take every every show or festival? That's it. You know? That's it. You don't have to take everyone that's offered." At I, I think a lot of folks want to recreate the nineties and early two thousands. And there it's just like, if we were trying to recreate the eighties, you, you can't do that. You can have right. a band come back and do a one time thing. And that's great. And I think if bands want to do it and you have the opportunity to go see them, you absolutely should. Mm -hmm. But like, you can't expect a 42 year old family man or a yeah. partner or, you know, you got two other bands. Like, you can't expect these crazy tours in a van, dude. Like you, Right. that's that's a wild thing to expect from people yeah i would love to see you guys live one of these days but i never got to see you live back in the in the 90s and early 2000s <laughs> mid 2000s whatever i never got to so sure. uh, wait, wait y'all's last album came out 2010s didn't it well so, um so um last rec the, the latest record was 2018 that was called Depression, 18 that pirates press put out but before that's that, right before that was 2007 and that was called Fire okay, seven and that was on Punk yeah so Eventually reissue yeah. that. That's also will will also be coming out on Pirate Express with extra That's stuff. so crazy. Another fly, another poster, another flexi, uh, vinyl variants, and then they're also doing. We have a seven inch in the U.S. and a split CD in Europe um, called All Out of Control that was released right after Strength Your Pain in 05, I believe, and that was a one time pressing of seven inches. I think. Damn. <laughs> He said 666 copies, but I think they made, I think our friends made that number up. I don't remember. But uh, <laughs> so, so with that, I was like, you know, that's definitely one of our most popular songs. Um, and I was like, you know, I don't really want to do a seven inch, even though I love the seven inches, man, um, for sure. But um, then I thought about it this way if we do that, if we do the all of control seven inch on a 12 inch, and then the not for them six song EP, which could fit maybe on a seven inch, but would definitely fit on a 12 inch. Right. All of the 12-inch records will be in one location in a record store instead of the 7-inch yep. section and the 12-inch no, that's, that's a good so, way to look at it. Yeah, so, the, so the, that all out of control 12-inch, uh, well, yeah, it'll be released for the first time and on a 12-inch, and I got it remastered, all new artwork. Um, Winston Smith, who did all the Dead Kennedy stuff in Green Day, he a wow. uh, collage of his uh, for the cover, so which was a high honor for me. Um, and two posters are included with that as well. So, you know, I guess they, they gave me the do whatever you want. I was like, cool. Can I do two 11 by 17 posters? I mean, they're small posters, but I think yeah, one of them so badass. Design, and then the, and then the design from the original, um, cover, it's like a red skull anarchist punk game type of thing. But, um, so sorry to answer your question. 2018 was the last <laughs> record, but before that it was all the way back to 2007. 2007. Okay, so, see, I, I think I was thinking 2007, but I forgot you had right. just told me about that other record from 2018. Yeah, I don't know that I've even heard that record, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, uh, and that was that was a, we're just like, you know, we were working with Pirates Press and that, like, hey, how do you guys want to do this? Do you want to say, like, coming soon? They're like, nah, let's just, when it's ready and we have it in our hands, we're going to say, available now. New Monster Squad record. I that, that might be... Fun. No, that's pretty rad. I'm gonna go do some looking, and I'm gonna listen to it, and maybe even throw up a review on the channel, uh, just yeah. because I like doing that. But uh, yeah, man, I, I really enjoy your band a lot. I'm glad I got to talk to you for a little while today, um, man. Uh, so okay, before we get out of here, we've been talking for a little while, but I, I have a couple more things I want to ask. Sure. I have a couple of things that are like I ask everybody the same questions. They're really corny, but I love it. Uh, but before we get to that point, whole hog. 
-hmm. What kind of music is that? And what are y'all doing? So a uh, quick blurb on Whole Hog. So there was, there, th this band is comprised of uh, previous members from um, our area. The okay. Sacramento, Davis, Winters, Dixon, Vacaville, where Monster Squad is from. So um, there's a band called Decoy from out here. Um, and the singer Jason, who runs a clothing line called Addicted to Chaos. It's all just custom, mm. handmade, hand-painted. He hand-paints all the colors on his shirts. Nice. Like, That's this badass. Is yeah. Like, you can get more screens. He's like, nah, man. I love just to sit there and paint. I'm like, cool. Um, so That's pretty him, badass. Yeah, him and then Doug, who had a band. He was in a band called Brain Rash. And then our drummer, Bo, um, had a band called Syndrome. I mean, they've all had multiple bands, but just for yeah. the laundry list. Um, yeah, Jason had come over and showed me his new band. And I immediately fell in love with the song. It was called Burden. And it's off a 12-inch called Radiation Blues. That Charged Records put out. Um, nice. And yeah, I was like, ah, you want to do this? Okay. Um, so we did. And then um, when he showed me that song, he'd say like, yeah, we don't have a bass player yet. It's like, cool, I can play bass. I didn't know Bro, he played that's bass. awesome. No one knows that I play bass, or I'm not many people, I guess. So I wouldn't expect anyone to know that I play bass, but my house is always the practice house. So, you know, <laughs> there stays here and I pick it up and I play it. Um, so yeah, so we did. Yeah, that's a 12 inch nine song EP. And then we released another one ourselves called Dystopian Reality. Um, I, what I, you know, was I the song? Have, I happen to have some of these right here. So that's, that's awesome. Length. So that's our first full length. And then okay. this, is another, this is Winston Smith collage. This is his hand. That's, he made. Dude, that's badass. And B side, there we go, backwards. This is Brian from A Global Threat. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, he has. You just go to Brian Lowe. Okay, now I can hear. Now I can hear. Cool. That was weird. Okay. Yeah, my mom. Yeah, just, that's, oh, <laughs> hey, that's what's up, though. Shoot. Um. Okay, I forget where I was at, but we were talking about that. That's yeah. We're talking about the split. So what's up with the split? Okay. Yeah. Technical difficulties. Left up. Dystopian reality. Burp. And yeah. Um. Our latest album, Split, with Brian from a Global Threat. Uh, Winston Smith did the artwork and stuff. It's really cool. Self-release, and then no, not self-release. Sorry, Dismantled Records. Dismantled Records. Okay. Um, this one we put out ourselves on Addicted to Chaos Records. Um, yeah, Brian's Bandcamp, like Brian Lofian dot Bandcamp. There's like seven thousand different punky feeds on there that he all self-recorded. He's a oh he's wow, a maniac. He's so good. Um, Just badass. Yeah, yeah. So whole hog. Yeah, I don't know. I play bass in the band. It's like super fun. My first time not playing drums in a for a band. Oh and wow! It's really nice just to walk up with two hands and go. That's all my gear. That's all I got. Right, uh, right. So it's a it's a it's a really big learning experience for me. Honestly, you know, the band writes differently than any other band I've been in um, before, um, which which was like a huge challenge for me at first. Um, but we also have a lot of songs. So like it's working. Oh yeah. Before, what? Before, you know, you know, this either like a nine song EP, a fourteen song one, this is five, and we already have like six to ten, you know, floating around in the iPhone voice voice memos somewhere. That's badass. Um, what was the song that you were talking about that really grabbed your attention when they first showed it to you? So it's on the twelve inch EP called Radiation Blues. Okay. The first song on that, which is called Burden. Okay, cool. I just wanted to listen to that one later tonight and just check it out. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I mean, honestly, it's, it's, I don't know, it's fast, hardcore punk stuff, but nice. um, those who pay attention to somewhat technically challenging guitar riffs um, and sometimes odd mathy, nah, I shouldn't say mathy, strike that. Um, you'll, yeah, you'll, <laughs> you'll hear some weirdness in there because our, because Doug, our guitar player, like, yeah, he writes some, some weird shit, man. Like, it's pretty cool. Each, each one of them, awesome. I've only contributed a few songs. But, you know, our, our drummer, guitar player, and singer contribute each different styles of punk that all it okay. blends really, really well. Um, yeah, it's very cool. So, so yeah. what are what y'all, are y'all playing anywhere outside of California or no? Uh, no, no, not right now. No, we have. Yeah. We, we did a mini tour a year or two ago. Um, but yeah, you know, just doing what we can. Definitely That's local. what's up, though. We play Sacramento. Yeah. We play Sacramento too much. Okay. Uh, that's, hey, that's fun though, man. I was just curious, man. I, I, uh, I, I find it interesting. I've always thought as uh, of myself as somebody that was like, I was kind of stuck down here, quote unquote. 
I couldn't, but I think a lot of folks are kind of stuck where they're at. They don't have the ability to just go do things. And you always think yeah. of these bands as like, oh, they, they, of course they can go tour. They're from California. And it's like, that's not really the case anymore, especially not at our age. Yeah. Yeah. And like, even to that point, you know, when Monster Squad stopped touring in, I want to say it was 2010, 2009, like our, I would say that our genre, sub genre, whatever the hell you want to call it. I mean, I don't know. To be honest, I've never understood why we're considered a street punk band. <laughs> if I'm being really honest here, but that's the really, point. yeah. I just always considered us a punk hardcore band. Yeah, but but yeah, huh. I should pay more attention to I guess the bands we're playing with because we are a street punk band. Um, but again, that's me. <laughs> that's me. That's me, right? I'm, there's something I'm missing. I mean, I there's knows. all these little boxes that we're put yeah. into, man. I mean, really, it's all punk, right? It's just, it's either punk or it's not punk. Yeah, it, you know. Yeah, but but, like, uh, <laughs> but around that like 2010 realm, yeah, like, uh, the, our ba the bands in our world were definitely touring less. You know, it's just like I remember when I think either Crumb Bums or Starving Wolves had come through after we had decided to stop touring, and they're like, "Man, it's getting really it's it's just it's hard." You know, the less turnouts are smaller. Gas was crazy, but now gas is probably double than it was back then. But um, but ultimately, I don't know. Yeah. Make a choice. Do what you can, you know? Right. Yeah, do what you can. That, that's that's the right answer. Do what you can do. And either you're fortunate enough to live around a band you really like and you can go see them sometimes or yeah. you're not. I'm always great. Like, I'm stoked that you're putting the records out so I can get those because that's what I that's what I can get. So I want that. And, uh, you know, I think everybody should be, you know, I'm not trying to be a prick. You should be grateful what you got, man. If you, if you can get oh, yeah. so really... Dude, podcasting has opened it up to where you can at least hear from your musicians. Uh, the uh, YouTube, you can see live shows sometimes. Like it's not the same, of course, but it's pretty cool to be able to at least see some of the stuff that you want to see. I, I don't know, man. I think we're we're pretty yeah. fortunate. If I was to, you know, think, yeah, you have to keep your options open and just be be down to explore different things. Like yeah, so I bought a ticket to so the OCs are one of my favorite bands, and I'd seen them live a bunch of times. Uh, but they did one of those like streaming shows, you know, it was set up in a cool old warehouse. The lighting was awesome. They clearly had some nice long lenses. And uh, I felt super weird. I was like, Hey babe, I bought tickets for the OCs. We're just going to sit on the couch and <laughs> watch it. That is, that and, is uh, pretty interesting. You know, it's like, it is what it is. I guess I don't, you know, they're not playing in Sacramento and this looks cool. Let's try this out. You know? Yeah. I'd rather Dude. be there taking photos you know but uh, right experience it right that sense it was, it was yeah, cool. every time i go to the i'm the guy that walk around with the camera on a stick try to take pictures and crap at shows i, I love doing that stuff uh <laughs> dude oh, so I, I, sh I shoot shows a lot photography is yeah. one, one, one of my things so i'm the guy who will, will hop on stage for a half a second and hop right off and hopefully no one yells at me to get that that's shot. awesome <laughs> dude that's badass man yeah. i uh i don't have the courage to just hop on stage like that i wish i did um the OCs, it's an interesting band for you to, to really like a lot. Not not that you shouldn't, but uh, mm -hmm. I was introduced to them like six, seven months ago at a record store down here in Houston. This guy was like, mm -hmm. hey, man, you might like this band. What was the album called that he got me listening to? It was, uh, I think it was a more recent album. Yeah. Hold on, I'll, t I'll tell you what it was. It was a black cover with a yeah, the black white cover artwork. With, with the Rudiment and Peanut cover on it. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's definitely their most straightforward kind of punk sounding record um yeah a foul form that's, yeah foul form. yep so that band came into my life because i was working in san francisco and some of the folks i was working with so this is like 2009 2010 and they were you know similar but different completely different lineup at that point and i just did not like the recordings uh, they were very lo-fi uh garage not like fuzzy distorted garage but like i was like yeah the recordings are okay but then i saw the live show and then a few of the friends who were like specifically my friend amy she's like see i told you i was like it was, the, <laughs> it was the live show for me and check this out i know we're running on time here but nah bro i'm, I'm chilling I, I just don't want to keep you all night well i know my phone i think my phone's about to die but um um uh, i was booking at gilman and since i was more active with build us airplanes at that time my job was to kind of bring in more less punk stuff like more of the garage scene or something that's not basically like the monster squad shows that we would book at Gilman. So oh, yeah. I emailed OCs in like 2011, I think about Blaine doing a Gilman show. And then I don't remember if he, if John responded right away, but he did respond one year later saying, Hey dude, is that Gilman show offer still on the table? Um, I had this lineup 
um, some kid called Ty Seagal is going to open. Um, and then Ty Seagal became, is now a pretty famous human musician. Okay. Uh, I thought I recognized that name. I don't, I don't know why. Yeah. It, it's, it's in the same world garage stuff, but, uh, and then okay. uh, a, new, a new band called off is going to headline. So Whoa. He's, like, he's like, I have off the OCs. I figure who else played, but then Ty Seagal was, I think, pretty new. Well, he must have been pretty new at that point to open Dude, the show. Dude, that's wild. That was, I think, 2012, I believe. And uh, and that actually might have been the show. When I, that that might have been the first time I saw them. And that show was just fucking bananas. Like, yeah, oh. definitely, definitely well sold out, Gilman. And being Dude, in like... I definitely. The- yeah. I'm sorry. I got all no, excited because no, I do know who that Ty Seagal person is. I do oh, yeah. know who that is. I was like, I was like, I'm just gonna Google this. Just well, my memory is really, really freaking bad. But I, as soon as I saw the photo come up, I was like, oh shit, I do know who that is. Uh, yeah. That's that was wild. Imagine. And like that, all that, yeah. So so often, and the OCs and Tyce Gall played Gilman because I was responsible for bringing non-punk stuff to Gilman. And Dude, it just that's badass. Out that it wound up being a fucking rager, like lying down the block. And guess who didn't bring his camera? Like an idiot. I was like, nah, I'll just hang out and watch the show. And right when I get there, like, you idiot, like, you know better. Always bring your camera. Like, always bring Dude. the camera. Um, right. And then the last pit that I hardcore regret is, you know, end of the night, we're in the payout room, the Gilman office, you know. So it's myself, a couple other Gilman um, volunteers, uh, John OCs pops in real quick, and just Keith Morris. Just hanging out. Just, uh. just hanging out. I'm like, well, here would have been my opportunity to get a nice portrait of Keith Morris in the Gilman office. And that would have been like, you know, that, that would have been really cool to have, but I guess it's uh, yeah. lives, in the brain, lives in the brain forever. So Dude. Yeah, he was cool. that was neat. Yeah. So when I, when I did go out of town, I went to Las Vegas and I was at the punk rock museum and I'm standing there just kind of hanging out with my buddy. And he, my friend taps me on the shoulder and he goes, he goes, dude, like, I don't want to be like weird. Cause I don't know who else knows who this is. He goes, dude, check that shit out. And I look over, and like Greg Hudson's just like walking right in front of me. And I was like, oh, I don't have the courage to pull up my phone and even snap a photo. I was just like, that's fucking crazy, dude. I was like, that's wild. Cause like, yep. you know, down here, bro, I don't, there was a lot of bands I didn't get to see and a lot of people. So that was really, really cool to see him just like casually hanging out in that place and not be, you know, not no rock star bullshit. He was just yep. hanging out. It was, yep. it was pretty cool, man. That's good. That was his. Well, last question. Oh, yeah. I have to ask this to everybody just because I'm curious. If you could go out and tour right now and you could take anybody with you and they could either be a headlining act or open up for y'all, whatever, any band on the planet, who would you tour with and why? Oh, Jesus. That, I know, right? That's a, that's a big one. I kind of hate this question. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, right. I don't mean it. I, 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 uh, hmm. Oh, gosh. Hmm. I feel like no matter what I say, I'm going to regret it. Um, <laughs> that's I mean oh, you know, okay, people there okay um, I'll speak from the band perspective and I don't know if this is how everybody else feels but we one of our brother sister bands from Sacramento when Moscow was very active was the Whiskey Rebels and, okay uh, and um, we we just we always talked about touring together and we never did we played together up the wazoo you know um, in Sacramento area uh, Gilman you know Berkeley and I'm sure elsewhere too down in LA, but that I would I would say with Whiskey Rebels, our old friends. Dude, that's a that, fantastic that, that's, answer, bro. Because that would be a family, you know, that would be a family event, you know. Of uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be a it'd be a group of forty to fifty, forty eight, maybe. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. But um, and I'm sure we'd be like, yeah, we should have done this twenty years ago. <laughs> but you know, at least we'll make it home alive now since we're all somewhat responsible, right? right. <laughs> Right. Well, that's a great answer, man. I, I, I honestly, I usually get, I'd say it's like 63 or 66, 33. It's like two thirds and one third. It's either the bigger chunk is people saying stuff like that. Like it's like their friends, bands, uh, mm-hmm. people that they know personally. And then every now and then somebody will go, Oh dude, I'd tour with maiden. And I'm like, that's cool. Or like Jewish yeah, priest right. or, or, yeah. you know, so I wasn't sure if you were going to say like the oh, dead oh. Kennedys or like some homies, but well, I'm not surprised that you said some friends. No. I'm not surprised at all. DK was, of course, the first one that came to mind, but I'd have to be like, no, nah, DK83 after plastic surgery came out. Um, but then I would even say, like, I, I would 
take um, build us airplanes on tour with with, <laughs> with Rush. <laughs> that also you know makes, what I'm saying? I'm saying <laughs> I mean, I you know. Rush, so hey, dude. Like, I mean, I would just reform Operation Ivy and be like, "Come on, guys, we're gonna go play some." Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna cover a bunch of leftover crack songs, and you guys can play your stuff. And you know, I'll li- I'll live that dream for a for a few days. Yeah. That would be freaking yeah. badass, man. Yeah. Matthew, it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Like sincerely, man. I'm I'm dude. I thank you for your time, man. Oh shit! <laughs> I bet that was another phone call. Yeah, that wrapped up immediately. My man's phone just said, "Boop, see ya." I'm going to give it a second and see if he pops back on. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's funny, bro. Uh, I love live recordings like this. I bet his, oh, his phone might have died. He said his phone's fixing to die. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a pleasure having Matthew on. Uh, anybody out there that's watching this or listening to this still, thank you so much, man. That guy is super, super nice. Uh, very, very gracious with his time. Go listen to Monster Squad if you get an opportunity. Oh, he's back. <laughs> um, my phone died. Dude, I knew it. That's what I said. I was yep, laughing. I, know. I was like, I was like, I was like, did he get a phone call? And I was like, no, his phone died. But yeah, look, man, uh, it's been a. <laughs> why do we want to? Uh, yeah. Oh, I wanted to say one other thing too. Um, yeah. So. Um, obviously, like to go back to the records and the Monster Squad records. Um, yeah. Um, oh, here's one more. Here, here's another one we did recently. That's this fucking year, awesome. 25 year anniversary, seven inch. Um, where we re-recorded songs with the original four members, like all voice. That's memos. awesome. Like That's the guitar's, badass. the guitar's voice memo, um, which is ridiculous. But and this is that EP I had mentioned that had not been released on vinyl. That Damn. is now released on vinyl. And, yeah, this this was the back of the cover from back then. A photo I took of my friend Josh. Um, original lyric sheet, same lyric sheet, and of course, of course, funky colors. You know, Fuck, dude, I want all this stuff but, in my possession right now. Like, but, uh, I'm so anxious right now. <laughs> but yeah, so that so that record, Strength to Pain, and the re the reissue of Depression will be available in April from Pirates Press, and then sometime in June, I think, uh, the Fire the Faith, which is our second LP will be available along with the All Out of Control uh, 12 inch LP that I mentioned, but comes with the posters and stuff. Um, all the stuff was redesigned by me, um, the layouts and stuff under the studio Fallout guys, which that was something I wanted to quickly mention. Um, it's a studio Fallout's a design studio slash okay. venue that, um, like an art space that I have nice. with, with Winston Smith. Okay. Um, and our friend Hank That's- and Rita used to be a part of the thing called Destroy Art. Um, and of course, Winston's wife, Chick, is our operations uh, queen. But um, nice. to like kind of touch earlier on how like it's really cool when you meet someone who you know you 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 appreciate and respect their art, and then you become friends. Like that happened in my weird world, and now we have a creative design studio together. Um, That's amazing. So just yeah, I still don't believe it, but um, yeah. So on all these layouts, I I changed even the old records. I said you know. But whereas before it would have said, you know, layout by Matthew Cotty. Now it's layout by Matthew Cotty at Studio Fallout. <laughs> so, Hell yeah. No, that's, put it in there. Dude, I'm I'm on this video I'm working on for this band. It's definitely going to say video by Knife Crime Apparel because that's, yeah. I want my Knife Crime Apparel logo on there. I want, because that's what I associate with me is that, not necessarily my name. I'm like, I'm like, I want Knife Crime Apparel's shit yeah. on there somewhere. Uh, 31 Records on there somewhere. Yeah. Like, Dude, you have to do that, you know, like in like the booklet on Strength of Pain, the 12 page booklet, you know, my girlfriend Rochelle was, you know, giving me good feedback on it. And she's like, so where does it say credits for for you on here? Like it doesn't It's like, well, why? Like you don't want to give yourself credit for the, like you've been in here for 40 hours. I was like, nah, nah, it's fine. I feel kind of weird doing it. I, 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 right. it was stupid of me to not. Yeah, well, because, well, because here's the thing. If you don't do it, somebody might not. So you may as well. And right. if you do do it, other people might feel confident enough to mention that. I've, I've learned through trial and error that sometimes when you don't give yourself the credit, people don't think to ask, but they yeah. would have. They don't think to tell you because they, they would have said something, but they didn't know. And they're like, oh, shit, if I had known, I would have said something about it. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I've also learned from working with bands that if you do stuff for them, they want you to put your name on that somewhere. They're like, no, 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 no. Where, where can I put your logo? Like I, yeah. I'm doing my first bit of vinyl with a guy. 
And he's like, hey, we're, we're, he's like, send me your logo and all your like your catalog number. I'm going to put it on this. And I was like, oh, dude, thank you. I wasn't sure he was going to. I didn't really know if I should ask. And he's like, no, right. bro, this is, you're putting in a fair amount of money. I was like, right. yeah, but, you know, that's all I'm doing is putting some of the bill. Like, I'm not I'm not. He's like, right. yeah, but that's a big part. He's like, right. what you do to get and, that money? Something. Right. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> OK, good yeah. point. <laughs> like, and it's also for me, I, mean, I guess I felt weird because I felt like I was tooting my own horn. But then like, there's an element of like. Nah, man, like celebrate yourself, celebrate the work that you, the effort that you put into this. I mean, yeah, this is a collaborative, it's a group effort, right? Like the band had to happen for this booklet to happen, but you know, right? you know, I guess I, yeah, I felt like it was, I was, I think I felt like I was being a little egotistical and by putting, by giving myself credit for something I spent like 40 to 60 hours on, which was stupid. Right. Like that is just ridiculous, well, you know? Think about it like this. You didn't spend 40 to 60 hours on it. You spent your whole life on it. Cause when you were putting that album out the first time, you probably couldn't have created that booklet. Oh, it took, yeah. it took your whole life to learn how to do yeah. that. So when you yeah. got to that, you're, it's just like somebody that's like, Oh, I paid a plumber 250 bucks to come to my house and change one thing. It's like, no, 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 no. You yeah. played the you paid the plumber to know how to do that and to know that that's what the problem was. Right. That's so, what the money went for. The money went for his whole his all of his experience, oh yeah. not necessarily. Yeah, it's the not time. This, all he did was change a bolt and it took just like, yeah. And that's that happened with me with photography too. Like, you know, I was gave someone a quote for ridiculously low price um to come shoot some kind of event thing. You know, a job, not something not yeah. a style of photography I'm passionate about. And fortunately, yeah, yeah. I reached out to a, a fellow photographer friend, and they said they basically quadrupled what I quoted. And wow. I was like, no way. They're like, you have to realize you're being paid for your 15-ish years of experience, your professionalism, of course, your skill, how you conduct yourself with these people, and of course, the end result. Punctuality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're on time, you're late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I just had never thought about things that way. To me, it was always just... Yeah, well, yeah, being afraid to well, ask what you're worth, and then dude, not considering all the work you put in, that, right? You know. Well, l l learn your worth isn't even always about dollars. It's just about right. learn your worth, man. I mean, it, like if you go to work every day and you hate your fucking job, yeah, and your and, and not only do you hate it, but you do really good at it, and they don't even care. Man, you might want to look for a new position somewhere right. else, man. Like maybe take less money and be super stoked to be there all the time. That's yeah. your, that's learning your worth, man. Like I'm worth me being happier. Like oh, yeah. you don't owe anybody anything. You go to your yep. place. Like what are they going to do? Fire you? Like, right. I mean, look, that's not necessarily the best way to look at things, but like, it's also not the end of the world. So. Right. And yeah, that, that man. And that's an element. I, I, I don't think I came into that position right there that you just described until this last like few years of my life working. Yeah. I have mastered bro. the art of not giving a shit, bro. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. when I was, Bro, I have had to learn how to give some shits, man. Like people, <laughs> so we, people, people. <laughs> I think yeah. I gave too many shits and it, it yeah. helped me back from doing certain things. It definitely did. <laughs> and know? then I didn't give enough shit to where yeah. it held me back from some certain things. Yeah, we should I, uh, we should have met in the middle. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I mean I've had people tell me they're like, bro, I, I wish I could like think like you think. I'm like, dude, look, it's a double edged sword. Like Yeah, it is. It's yeah. it's wonderful to a degree, but like, you know, when I'm Okay, true story. My kid was getting kind of, I don't know if bullied is the right word. This kid was bothering him, right? And I told him, hey, man, fucking punch him in the face, dude. He told him to stop twice, right? He's like, yeah, my like, dude, you don't get three strikes, man. And he was like, uh, and my kid's super nice, right? And he's like, well, and I was like, I was like, look, all I'm saying is, is don't start a fight. But if he keeps squirting water on you at school, I don't need you coming home with wet clothes. And I'm not going to be mad if you tell him, hey, stop it. And he doesn't. And you open hand slap him. I was like, some people need an open hand slap. I was like, again, do not start a fight. But like, right. and then he's like, yeah, okay. And then, I, but as I'm thinking about it, like doing the dishes later, I'm like, fuck, oh, dude. Like, yeah, but still, maybe you shouldn't smack this kid at school. You know, like, <laughs> like my 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 heart yeah, of heart says, probably. dude, fuck that kid, punch him. Sure. And then I'm like, but then I'm like, well, I don't want him to do that, and then think it's okay to like punch somebody. Because that's right. not what my point was. My point wasn't it's okay to punch anybody. So, right. yeah, being a dad's rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's fucking awesome, but it is hard, dude. Yep. It is difficult, man. Uh, look, man, I really appreciate talking with you. Uh, sincerely, man, I've, I've listened to your music a lot in my life. So it is it is really neat to be able to sit down and talk with you for a little while. Uh, 
if you ever have the desire to do it again, if you need any kind of promotion or something, man, you reach out, let me know, bro. I'm happy cool. to, happy to help. Cool, so, uh, maybe one day we'll do it again. Yeah. It was fun, man. Honestly, I, got, I love how casual it was and yeah, just shooting the shit. Like you said, it would be, you know, 